guys, I'm Daniel Wyatt with In His Hands Contractors. I'm here to talk with you today a little bit about metal roofing, uh, specifically the uh, color options, and then as, as far as the install goes, I want to run over with you how we ourselves here at In His Hands Contractors, how we install these roofs and the uh, proper procedure to go about that. So back here behind me, I have a um, wide variety of color uh, options when it comes to metal roofing. Uh, lots of times you'll hear the, the misconception that, you know, I don't want to go with metal because I'm trying to match out a siding or uh, I want a specific color. But as you can see here behind me uh, and it, holding in my hand these color chip samples, we have a wide variety of colors um, and metal can, can come in just about any color that you want. You can literally pick any color that you want in the, uh, in the metal and, and more than likely if, if you are looking for a certain color, we, we provide that color for you. So I want to talk right now about the uh, process before we actually do the install uh, for the metal roof. I want to talk about the process of how to get there. Um, this is specific, specifically the way that we do it. Um, of course, we feel, we believe that the, the way that we do it obviously is the best way and I would uh, highly recommend that uh, anytime you have a roof installed, you should look for a couple key components that I'm going to go over. So starting off, the first way that we would talk about in this application, we're going to talk about a re-roof, not a new construction home. This is one that's had a, a roof previously uh, installed. Um, let's say it's, a, it's previously had an asphalt shingle roof that's been up there for uh, 15 or 20 years. It's in, in need of replacement. The first step that we are going to go with is we're going to remove the entire um, roofing that is up there right now, the shingle. Um, whenever we remove that, of course, we use dump trailers instead of dumpsters. One of the benefits of that is, of course, you've got uh, people that have some nice driveways. You've got your concrete you don't want scrape marks over top of. Um, so that gives us a nice clean way to back a trailer into there um, and the tires don't make marks and you know um, skin, skin your uh, pavement or your driveway up. Once we get the dump trailer in there, we meet actually on site there, we start the process of removing the old uh, materials, the shingle, the metal, whatever the case is there. We'll strip the old material all the way down to the decking. Once the decking is fully exposed, we'll go through there, we'll pull all of the old fasteners that was used to uh, install your old product. Instead of driving those up, lots of times you'll see uh, people up there and they'll, they'll drive the fasteners up because it's quicker than pulling them. And of course when you pull them you've got nails that's running down the roof and down to the ground. Um, so lots of people will just go around through there they'll drive those up. Um, the problem with that is of course as you drive those fasteners up, when the new roof is installed, you have those, that, those old fasteners that start to back out over time punching holes or putting dents in your uh, new roof that you've just installed. So I would highly recommend that you uh, watch for that process right there that those old fasteners are removed and not just drove back into the uh, existing decking. Now that we've got the roof down to uh, raw decking, of course at that point we've got um, the, the roof decking fully exposed to where we can uh, see any problem areas around chimneys, around dormers, uh, around any penetrations whatsoever. If a roof has been up there for 20 years, more than likely you're going to have some water damage or some rot going on. At that point, we will check the uh, roof decking for the condition of it. We, uh, we can expose any rot that you have going on, any water damage you have going on, or any broken decking, which is what you'll find a lot of times uh, on older houses where the decking has actually just been broke through uh, from, from the previous install of the shingle roof. Uh, we will replace any, roof, uh, in, any um, sheathing at that point. Um, and we will uh, completely uh, replace any rotted decking, any broken decking. That way we have a nice, clean, solid substrate to put our new roofing materials back on top, on top of. Once we have a nice, clean slate to work on top of with our new decking uh, freshly uh, replaced and, and we have a, uh, a solid substrate there, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, come in there and we're going to lay out a, what, what would be considered a vapor barrier. Traditionally, they used a tar paper for a vapor barrier, um, but that, of course, raises a, a few concerns on that. Whenever you tear an old roofing off, you will always see this where the paper felt is cracked, it's split, it's deteriorated, it's into shambles up there. So, of course, if it's, if it's in that condition when you're taking the roof off, it's failed to do its job, which essentially is to be a vapor or water barrier uh, for whenever, you're, um, whenever your roofing product sweats or condensates from the backside. 
to void against that, what we have, this is just, uh, something that's a little bit newer to the market. Um, been around for uh, 10 or 15 years now and uh, lots of um, up and coming roofing companies, lots of your bigger roofing companies, including ourselves, we like to use this. This is uh, what they consider a synthetic fill. This synthetic fill, it weighs 10 times lighter than a traditional paper fill. Uh, it does not break down, it does not deteriorate over time. Um, it's a three-ply uh, roofing product, underlayment product, so um, it's got a lot more strength. As you can see here, you cannot tear this stuff like you can traditional paper felt. It really uh, um, you know, withstands whenever you're walking over top of it. it. It helps withstand the foot traffic that's on top of it. Um, just has a lot of really good benefits to it uh, that traditional paper felt does not. So I would highly recommend that when you go to have your roof installed, this is a product that you would have in place of your um, traditional paper fill. The next product that I want to talk to you all about is a product that we specifically apply at all of your stress points of your roof. Um, that's going to be your transitions where you have a lower pitch of the roof come to a higher pitch of the roof. This is also going to be uh, in the valleys, whether it be a dormer or whether it be a gable roof, another section of the roof uh, coming out from the main section, anywhere where you have a valley that's created. This is what I would highly recommend uh, that you make sure is installed on your roof. This is something we install on every single metal uh, roof that we install. This is something that, that we make sure that is put down previously uh, to install in the metal itself. What I have here in my hand, this is called uh, ice and water shield, and specifically this is high temperature ice and water shield. Uh, there's a couple different types of, of ice and water shield out there on the market, and you have um, one, t one specific type that you want to stay away from. They have a traditional ice and water shield that has actually got an asphalt base that looks a whole lot uh, uh, looks a whole lot like a shingle in texture. It's actually got the granules on it, and you want to stay away from putting that in your valleys whenever it comes to a metal roof. Um, the main reason in that being is this right here. Your new roofing material is going to heat up even though um, we have you know, reflective paint, we have a, a Kynar 500 or a Kylar 5000 ingredient in the paint which lets the um, sun be reflective to it instead of absorbing the heat. It is still going to take on heat when it's 96 degrees outside. As that heat is transferred through to the back side of your metal, it will heat that traditional ice and water shield up causing it to become liquid form and run out on the face of your new metal. One thing that uh, you would look for whenever it comes to this ice and water shield is make sure that you use a high temperature ice and water shield on any metal that you do whatsoever. This can withstand the heat. This has a uh, paper face over top of it, so and, uh, uh, unlike the asphalt face. Um, so this does not heat. When this does heats up, this does not melt over time. So it's going to uh, withhold, you know, withstand all the uh, heating elements of it, and uh, this will stay intact, stay in place without doing the uh, running out and melting of the material. So I would definitely look for that when you're going to have a roof installed. We always install this on the valleys and all stress points of the roof uh, any time that we go to do a metal roof. Okay guys, so up to this point we've uh, went over the uh, removal and the preparation, the removal of the old roof and preparation of the new roof, uh, including replacing any damaged or bad decking, rotted decking, um, installing the synthetic felt and installing the high temperature ice and water shield in all valleys and transitions. Uh, what I want to do now is we have, when it comes to the uh, install of metal roofing, we have two different styles of roofing. We have tough rib and we have stand and seam. The one that we're going to look at first is uh, what we consider tough rib and it is a uh, face screwed or a f exposed fastener uh, metal system. Uh, this system has a lot of benefits to it. One of the biggest benefits uh, that this system has to it is it is not very um, time consuming to install. It is not very uh, detailed as far as uh, in comparison to the standing scene. Um, and then also of course along with that comes uh, the fact that it is economical uh, from a price point of view. Um, so I want to go over um, and th this, this uh, tough red metal roof install and I want to point out some things to y'all uh, that you should be looking for whenever it comes to the installation of your new uh, metal roof.
So one of the first things that you're going to start with is you're going to start by adding a drip edge right here. That drip edge will run all around the eaves and uh, at the gutter line that should sit up on the face of the uh, roof itself underneath of your uh, uh, metal roofing materials and it'll come down on the face of your fascia board uh, approximately an inch and a half uh, in most cases. That'll run all the way around the eaves uh, at the gutter line and then you will have, it'll stop uh, once it comes over to a, a rake or a gable, it will stop at that point and you will have another trim that will take over in that place. The second material that you'll install is you'll install your valley material. Your valley material uh, is a 29 gauge, in this case a tough rib, so a 29 gauge tough rib material. The valley, one thing you should look for, the valley should be closed up so that um, it's not open to eyesight and it's also not open for when water runs down the valley. It cannot curl and run back up underneath. Also, it's closed up so that um, intruders cannot get in, whether it be birds, bees, etc. Um, so you want a nice, neat, closed uh, look to it uh, when it comes to your valley. That leads me to the install of the actual metal panels itself. When you go to install the metal panel itself, you should look for on the overhang, a inch and a half minimal overhang, and depending on the pitch of your roof, up to a two inch overhang. You want to make sure that it is not flush with the drip edge or flush with the fascia board itself. A, a metal roofing material needs to have an inch and a half overhang at minimal so that it's getting the water out and away from the structure of your house into your gutter. As far as the install goes on the field panels itself, what you want to look for when it comes to fasteners is on each side of the main rib on each one of these panels you should see a screw installed. Those screws are installed on each side of the main rib and those are put on center at every three to four foot depending on the length of roof that you're installing. So now we've made it to the point where we've installed our field panels, we've installed our drip edge, we've installed our valley, and we've installed our field panels. Now it's ready for the stage of what we call trim out. The first thing that you want to do whenever it comes to trim out, the next step in this process is going to be installed the rake trim. One thing you want to look out for in this process is make sure that your roofing contractor is not just bringing the metal and hanging it over at your gable ends an inch and a half and leaving a raw exposed edge where blowing rain or water can work its way back up underneath of there and leave an unsightly unpainted bottom edge where that overhang is at. Rake trim when installed the correct way serves two different purposes. The first purpose is aesthetics. When it comes to the looks of your roof of course, having all the trim components installed is going to look a lot better and a lot more finished and complete than leaving trims off. The second thing that rake trim helps with when it comes to functionality is it actually helps when you install the rake trim, it helps wind not to be able to work its way up underneath of the panels over at your gables, unlike it would if you were just to have an inch and a half overhang at your gable ends with a roll edge exposed to it. Make sure that when you're having your metal roof installed that this rake trim is included. It is not just an accessory, it is a necessity. Moving on to the next trim, the next trim material that I want to speak to you all about is the ridge cap. Before installing the ridge cap, you should have some sort of proper ventilation. In a shingle roof, this is called ridge vent. In a metal roofing application, we call this flexo vent. If you have paper faced or blown insulation, you will need proper ventilation. If you have spray foam insulation, no ventilation is required at this point. Before you install your ridge cap, you will need to make sure that the ridge is cut out all along the ridge an inch to an inch and a half on each side of the rib to on each side of the ridge to allow for proper ventilation and to let the heat dissipate from the attic. Before putting the ridge cap on, this would leave exposed edges, this would leave a gap underneath of the ridge cap where birds and bees and other creatures could get in, so you want to make sure that this is closed up. At this point, you would install your flexo vent. 
This flexo vent is solid, continuous, two inch strip and it comes in a 10 foot roll. Once installed, this is actually perforated to allow the heat to dissipate but prevent things from getting inside your attic. After this product is installed, now it's time to install your ridge vent. When you install your ridge vent, you'll want to make sure that you have a fastener on every rib or at least on every other rib as to make sure that your ridge cap does not come loose and blow off. At the very ends, when you come to a gable end on your ridge cap, you'll want to make sure that it's not just cut off and left raw, but you'll want to make sure that the ridge cap is actually turned down again to create a nice tight water seal and one where birds and bees cannot get into your attic. This concludes the installation of a tough rib metal roof. Okay guys, we're going to talk about the second type of metal roofing. This is considered standing seam. I want to start with the standing seam the same way we did with the tough rib. You should make sure that you have a drip edge installed first at the eave line or at the gutter line all the way around the perimeter. With this drip edge, you will want to make sure that it has an inch and a half lip that actually sticks out into the gutter and does not just come flush with the fascia board. I'll explain to you in a minute why you want that inch and a half lip sticking out past the fascia board. Once you have your drip edge installed all the way around the perimeter of the eave or the gutter line, it's now time to install your valley. The same way with tough rib, you'll want to make sure that when your valley is installed, you'll want to make sure that you have your ends nice and closed up so again to prevent anything from getting up in there and to prevent rain from coming down and water rolling up underneath of uh, the valley metal itself. Once the valley metal is installed, it's now time to start installing panels. The first step in installing this panel is the panel will need to be cut and prepped to get ready to install. This panel should be cut with a one inch flange left over at the bottom of the panel. At that time, that one inch flange that is left over will actually be helmed under so that this panel is actually hooking on to that one inch and a half lip that we left on the drip edge. Once we hook the panel on, instead of face screwing this panel, we are actually going to install this with a standing seam clip. This clip is installed on the underside of the rib on standing seam. This clip should be ran every three to four foot depending on the roof square footage or area. Once you install the clips going on the panel, the first panel is now properly installed and the second panel will come over and snap right onto the first panel. You've now covered up all of your fasteners and you have a nice clean sleek look with no exposed fasteners. Not only should the panels be helmed underneath at the eave line onto your drip edge, but you should actually have them helmed at the valleys as well so as to prevent a raw edge and that edge could start buckling over time as it expands and contracts with heat and cold weather. Okay guys, now that we have our drip edge with our inch and a half flange sticking over into the gutter line, we have that installed. We now have our valley metal installed and we have our W valley closed up. We have our rake cleat installed at the valley. We have our panels installed, helmed under at the gutter line and helmed under one inch on the valley. That takes us to our next step, which is the trim out stage. The first step in this trim out stage would be installing the rake trim. Before installing the rake trim, because we cannot see any exposed fasteners running up the edge like we do on tough rib, we want to first install a rake cleat. That rake cleat is underneath of this rake trim. It looks just like the rake trim and it is actually face screwed onto the fascia board. Then we come back with our rake trim that actually just slides right over top of the rake cleat. Keep in mind you want to close up all of your ends 
so that you're not seen up in there. Once that is clipped on to there, it's clipped on to the cleat on the outside and it comes over and clips to the inside, you will have minimal exposed pop rivets that will be put on top of the rake trim to hold it in place. That brings us up to the install of our ridge cap. Before installing ridge cap, again we want to make sure that this is a hidden fastener system all the way around. We will first install our Z-Bar. Before we screw this Z-Bar on, we will make sure that we install our butyl tape on the bottom so as to create a nice, tight, watertight seal. Once the Z-Bar is installed, it is now time to install our ridge cap. Just simply clip the ridge cap on, pull it over to the other side, and snap it onto the other side of the ridge. Before joining your second piece, make sure to have at least a 3 inch water lap in between the two pieces of ridge cap. When you get to the very end of your ridge cap and you come to a gable end, the same way as tough rib, you want to make sure that you have your ridge cap turned down as to create a nice tight seal with no gaps. This concludes the install of our standing seam metal. As always, we appreciate you watching. Be sure to check back for new content coming your way. Please make sure that you hit the notification bell. Please like and subscribe. We look forward to seeing you again.